Welcome to DOS Geek. We are going to be exploring in a new video series I'm doing, The Dark Web. Dun, dun, dun. I need to cue some really dark, mysterious music here. Actually, what I want to do is kind of break down this concept that the dark web is just for bad, nefarious purposes. Even though it kind of has a nefarious name, the dark web, not everything on the dark web is bad. And it's just like any place else you go, whether you're on Facebook, the regular internet, if you go looking for bad things, you're going to find them. If you go on the dark web and you're not looking for bad things, you're just going to see that, well, it's very similar to the regular internet, with the exception, a lot more privacy out there than you get on the regular internet. Because today, all your traffic is controlled by corporations. They get to see everything that you're doing, whether it's an ISP or whether it's a search engine, watch all of this traffic and everything you're doing out there. And that's why the dark web was invented by the US Naval Research Labs, because they wanted to create a place that actually had the ability to go and surf the web without being tracked everywhere you go. And that's why later on in the history, you have EFF and other organizations to get involved. And you're going to find out when we get into this, the dark web has a lot of reputable companies out there with their sites out there on the dark web. So I'm going to teach you how to get on the dark web. We're going to talk about all kinds of cool things, how to do transactions and stuff out there. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to see that all of the fear and stuff behind the dark web, while there are bad places you should stay away from, if you don't go looking for them, you'll be fine and you'll have a really good time checking out this awesome technology here. So let's get into it. Step one to joining the Tor browser is to make sure that you have a proper mask. Now, this Guy Fawkes mask is definitely one that will make you very popular on the dark web, so I highly recommend this one. But you can also get a mask like this to surf the dark web. And see, if you get a mask like this, I just think it looks much more cool. Now you need to turn out your lights and make sure it's really dark and you look as nefarious as possible. And then realize that everything I'm saying here is just a joke and you don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is get the Tor browser which I'm gonna show you now. So to get the Tor browser, all you're gonna do is go to torproject.org and you're gonna go download the Tor browser here. You see we have options for every operating system and there are also third-party applications that allow you to get on it on iOS as well. But in this case, we're in Linux. You could download it for Windows, OS X, whatever you're using. If you're on Linux, you could probably get it from the software repository store, such as the GNOME software store here and simply type in Tor and get it this way. But in case you don't have it, I'm gonna go ahead and download this for Linux and show you quickly how you can install it from there because it's gonna download a zipped up tar file. And then we're just going to head into our download section and we can see inside of this file here is our Tor browser. And we need to go ahead and kick this off. We're gonna do that through the terminal one time to get this installed. So let's open up our terminal. We're gonna to head to our downloads. We're going to get into the Tor browser directory. We're going to list out. We're going to also get into this Tor browser directory here. We're going to list out again, and then we're going to do a dot slash start Tor browser desktop. And I'm hitting tab, by the way, to complete a lot of those commands in case you don't know that. And you can see here it pops up for us to go ahead and start. So I'm going to click connect. We're going to connect to the different relays out there, which we'll get into later about how all of this actually functions and works. And there we go. I have my Tor browser up and ready to rock and roll on the dark web. So now that we have the Tor browser installed, we could go to the dark web, but where do you go from here? Well, my suggestion naturally is just open up another tab here, go to dosgeekcommunity.com this is going to get you started because even in the Tor browser, we can browse the regular internet as well here. Now you're going to lose a lot of your anonymous capabilities if you're going in and signing in in a bunch of services using the Tor browser. But here, if you go to Dosky Community, you click on the brain and you click on the guide to the dark web, you're going to see that I have created a bunch of links here that you can relatively safely, because some of them are search engines. So if you go looking for stuff again, you're gonna find stuff. But this will be your guide for the dark web. 
and you can see we have our dot onion URLs here that you can go hang out with. Also, if we go back to my main page, you can go to the onion version of this itself. So let's go ahead and click that. And you're going to see that it's going to open the onion version of the Dosky community page. And you can see it's a bunch of gibberish followed by dot onion. And that's how we are now on the dark web. We're here, the scariest place on earth. We're here now. So what are some sites that you can visit now that you're on the dark web? You've got things like ProPublica. Get your news on the dark side of the moon. You've got BBC News. I told you there are a lot of big companies and corporations that also have a presence on the dark web. You can go to Soylent, which is a news aggregator. New York Times is on here. The Hidden Wiki is kind of a well-known indexed directories of a bunch of different sites. Again, some of this stuff in the Hidden Wiki, could, if you're going and looking for it, can take you places you probably don't want to go. But again, it does at least give you insight into what you're going to be clicking on when you go there. So you can decide to just go to the sites that look like they're social or cool places, you know, financial services, commercial services, domain services, blogs, emails, social networks, whistleblowing sites like WikiLeaks and things like that. All these sites, this is a pretty well-known directory of dark web pages that you can go through here. There are search engines out there on the dark web like I, I don't even know how to pronounce that, but this is a good search engine, uh, Amia. You've got DuckDuckGo, of course, which hopefully you're familiar with. And even if you don't go on the dark web, you're using DuckDuckGo as your search engine there for much, much more privacy. You have social networks and things that you can go hang out on. You have like Diaspora, Rattle, Galaxy 3, Black Hat Chat, Chatterbox. You've got Proton Mail, one of my favorite secure email platforms is out there on Onion as well. You can also check your anonymity. I can never pronounce that word. Want to know what kind of cookie crumbles you're leaving behind on the dark web? You can do things like that here and also a Tor metric site. So a lot of cool places for you to go check out. Again, relatively safe here, some information on Tor. So go check out that document. This one is not on the dark web. It's at hackmd.io, just so you know. But the links here will take you to one of the dark web sites. Like we could go check out for instance, the BBC in the darkness. The news is completely different on the dark web, on the BBC. Everything is nefarious out here on there. You will notice, like what we're dealing with right here, that dot .onion sites are much slower than your typical internet browsing. And a lot of that has to do with the steps that it takes going through different relays, at least three relays your traffic's jumping through, each getting a portion of your traffic. You can go out there and create your own server which we'll also talk about later in this, so you can help build a bigger network of systems and computers that your traffic gets routed through. But overall, the dark web is a much slower place for you to go travel. Now, those of us who were back in the day when we had 56K modems and AOL, it's still pretty speedy. But for you who are all used to just the DSL world, it's a little bit slower. There's also a lot of dead links out on the dark web. So you'll see a lot of directories will tell you, go here, go to this place. And you'll click on those links and those sites are no longer available or they happen to be down at that moment. It's something that just occurs much more common on the dark web. People run these servers on their home servers and things. They take it down. They have a power outage. They leave it down for a week or two, bring it back up. Sometimes never at all. It just really depends. Now, one of the things you'll notice when we went to the tour site, I went back to the tour project site and you can see that it tells you there's a dot onion available. So anytime you want to browse the .onion version of a website, if they have one, you'll see that little icon there. You can click on it. And now we'll go to the Onion version of the Tor Project's main website, which is where we will finish out this video talking about the different ways that this helps you to be able to explore the internet more freely and more privately. So hopefully at this point you realize that the Tor network getting on the dark web, there's nothing illegal about that itself. And the Tor project was designed with your privacy in mind. That's why it exists. All your traffic is not hopping through these central points owned by corporations and things like that. They're owned by individuals who have created all of these nodes, volunteers from across the globe and sharing this internet traffic out there, much like the original internet and how it was designed. So one of the ways that Tor emphasizes its privacy capabilities is 
through blocking trackers. Isolates each website you visit so third-party trackers and ads can't follow you. Cookies automatically clear when you're done browsing. So will your browsing history. That's built into the Tor browser by default. So if you want to go back in your history to find out what site you visited after you closed your browser, you're not going to find it. Defend against surveillance. Tor browser prevents someone from watching your connection from knowing what websites you visit. All anyone monitoring your browsing habits can see is that you're using Tor. Resist fingerprinting, multi-layered encryption, and browse freely. The idea being they believe everyone should be able to explore the internet with privacy. That's what the Tor project's about. That's what makes it awesome. And you can do that by simply downloading a browser. They couldn't make it any simpler to get on Tor. So if you head to the overview section of Tor, you can watch this two minute video that they put together that explains that this is a volunteer operated service. It's to improve privacy and security for everyone. It's really to circumvent censorship that's happening out there on the internet as well. Why you would need Tor, this kind of shows how the various distribution of the anonymous network works. As I understand it, at least at a minimum, will hop your traffic through three different nodes. And again, we're going to talk about how you can set up those nodes on services like DigitalOcean. I have a bridge, a Tor bridge set up myself so that people who are browsing it, will some of their traffic will come across their bridge. I don't set up to be an exit point for traffic because I don't really want to know at the end of the day where somebody's going or what they're doing and those type of things. And so I am a bridge in the middle to help with the traffic, but you can set services like that up on DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean also has one click onion router setups that you can do in their marketplace. So you can check that out as well. DigitalOcean is a sponsor of the Destination Linux Network and a terribly important part of the Linux infrastructure for being able to drop and easily deploy cloud platforms. So if you want to play with some of these services that we talk about on this channel, setting up different servers and Destination Linux, which will be coming out next week, we go through a whole home lab section. All of that you can do on DigitalOcean, go to do.co slash DLN and get your $100 credit just because you're watching this page. You're a fan of the work of the Destination Linux Network. do.co slash DLN, get your $100 credit, see what kind of cool things you can set up there. And we'll be going through some of that more in the future videos as we cover this stuff. And I think this view here explains how Tor works the best. You have all of these different systems. It's gonna randomly pick a path to hop through to get to your destination site. And if it goes within 10 minutes, then it may reuse the same links or paths, but otherwise it's going to create another random set of systems that you're going to go to and help in an encrypted link, keep your traffic and your privacy safe. So in this video, we have covered what the Tor dark web network is. So in this video, we've covered what the dark web is, that it's not just for nefarious purposes, but also has very legitimate companies and sites and information out there. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. If you're going to look for good things, you're going to find that stuff there. If you're looking for bad things, you'll find that stuff there, just like the regular internet. In addition, we know how to get on the dark web by using the Tor browser. Some browsers like Brave and things have it built in. And we know that it uses .onion sites instead of .com and .net sites. And you can also go to dosgeekcommunity.com and you can get a whole list under the brain section of the various links that I've put together, relatively safe. Some of the directories contain some information that could get you in trouble if you were looking for or wanted it, but for the most part, new sites and things like that for you to check out. In later videos, we're gonna be exploring things like setting up servers and other stuff so that you can help out the Tor network and I think more than ever with the news and things happening of all of this government spying and just at a mass surveillance scale, you can understand why having something like the Tor network is so ultimately important for our future. So it's definitely something I want you to check out and go support. Plus they'll send you cool stuff. You can't really see it here, but that right there is a letter from the onion tour network for donations and some cool stickers on that, I can't get my finger. It's so hard when you're on video, to, but it, it's back there. So you can get some swag for donating too. Definitely recommend going out there and supporting Tor once you learn about it to see if it's something that you're interested in. So until next time, get out there on the dark web and fill your brains. <laughs>